Okay, uh, what you see here is the Mary Curtis Ratcliffe group show. <laughs> now, that means that not only is there one body of work represented over the last 50 years, there's actually six bodies of work. So I'm going to start with the ones I, um, the earliest ones, the oldest ones, and they are these ribbon sculptures. I did these in 1982. Now I had done other ribbon sculptures before, but these are the ones that happened to get into this show for one reason or another. So these are rayon ribbons. They're kinetic and they cast shadows if they're lit nicely. And they, it works on this one. The other ribbon sculpture is bananas and cream. This one's called Pass Keys. That's bananas and cream. I did that also in 1982. <laughs> Hi, Alice. And um, they were, I did a whole bunch of them. So some of them I put outside and they're, they're 12 feet long and they, you know, get bollocks by the wind. And, and um, but these are more sort of quiet, more indoor pieces. And so after I did that, the next thing, um, was these large um, sculptures. And I did about seven of them. This one is Josephine. This is a, um, a commemorative piece to Josephine Baker, who to me was an incredibly courageous person that was, became the toast of the town in Paris in the 1930s and 40s. And so I made this commemorative piece to her. And, um, I actually went to the Folie Bergère when I was about 16, and I saw all sorts of dancers with all these, you know, <laughs> fluffy things all over them. And so I, that stayed in my mind as well. This is another piece called Vestal from that series. And um, I did about seven of those, and I had a very small studio. And I had to think, well, um, now what am I going to do? I'm running out of space. <laughs> which is something that happens to artists a lot. <laughs> and so I had a dream. And in my dream, I thought of cakes for some unknown reason. They were sculptural, they're, they're circular, circular, circular. So this, the circle is the theme that kind of runs throughout the work. And so I did these cakes back here. And they, um, first I did these, these three-dimensional cakes. This is the wedding cake. And it says, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> that was my first marriage, <laughs> not my second. <laughs> and then this one is an homage to Liberace. Um, you might, if you come close, you'll see a little tiny candelabra because I think he was really incredible. I mean, what courage. <laughs> this one is called the homage to Barbara Bush. Now, Barbara Bush had um, white hair, so I used this fake, you know, fur. And then she also used, she used to brag about her, her fake pearls. Remember that? Yeah. And so I, I dripped this whole thing with pearls, <laughs> just, just for the heck of it. And um, let's see, what did I do next? Uh, oh, the paper dolls. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, we, we're still on cakes. <laughs> sorry, Steve. Sorry, I was moving. Sorry. So these pieces are done. Um, I went from uh, three-dimensional cakes to two-dimensional cakes. Now I had found in a, um, an antique store in Alameda a big, huge book of 50s wallpaper, you know, those big ones that have a huge, big, black, thick cover, and they, they come in different um, colors. So, for instance, this is the same, exact same image, it just has a different color scheme. So I was able to take these, um, them and with a silver background, a yellow background, and a blue background, and juxtapose them on top of the other. These has a blue background, a gray background, and a pink background. And then I really had fun painting these 
goofy chrysanthemums all over the place. <laughs> and then this one is called Village. And so it again has, it uses the same theme of using this um, wallpaper with three different backgrounds. So it from a sample book. It's a sample book. Yes. Yeah, and they're big. They're big. I made a whole, I, I did cakes for about three years, three and a half years. And a friend of mine said, why are you doing all those cakes? And I said, I don't know, I like them. <laughs> why not? You know? So this was fun because I got to take the image, um, uh, be inspired by what was in the image of the wallpaper and extend it out. You know, fill in this tree, put a barn up here, another tree. And, and if you look very carefully, you'll see a little sticker of a dancing pig right there. <laughs> so, so, you know, I have this kind of wacky sense of humor sometimes. And this pig definitely <laughs> is a manifestation of that. So after I did this, I, then I decided to do paper dolls. <laughs> paper doll corner this way. <laughs> So I did a whole bunch of paper dolls for many years, and um, in these you see some 50s wallpaper here and here, but the fashions are actually the 40s. I love 40s fashions. Of all the fashions in the last century and this century, to me, the 40s have the most beautiful style. And so I used these as uh, 40s fashions on 50s wallpaper. <laughs> and then this is also a 40s, uh, it's a Dior. And um, this is, the name of this piece is called Take Back Your Mink. <laughs> now, I don't know if you know that song, Take Back Your Mink, Take Back Your Poils, What Made You Think That I Was One of Them Goyles. <laughs> so here's the mink. Here are the poils. Here's a clamshell. Clamshell. And up here is an image of a Japanese pearl diver that was taken by one of my relatives who went around the world in the 1950s and took a lot of really fabulous. She was a really good photographer, so I have a whole archive of her images. So I transferred the pearl diver up here. And then um, this actually is a photograph of me when I was 19. And it was taken by my Hungarian boyfriend at the time, who, <laughs> and the name of the piece is Siren. <laughs> anyway, I like the image, especially since, because it's, it's half there, you know, half of me is cut off. But I decided that I would um, uh, Xerox it onto acetate, 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 and then these are just straight black and white images. I don't know where that, that's a sepia one. I don't know how I got that. And so I just kept repeating it and kept flipping it and doing all sorts of tricks with it. That was really fun. This is in Peter's collection. Yeah. <laughs> Your second. My, <laughs> my second husband. Yes. Was it a better idea? Much better idea. <laughs> it was the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> okay, so then um, you can turn and look at this piece here, which is called Chandeliers. And um, from now on, everything you, um, I did came from my photography. I started taking photographs when I was about seven with a little brownie camera that you look through like that and it would take your picture like that. Went click on the side. Anyway, I've been using, I've been photographing my whole life and I do series of photographs. Like I've, I'll photograph staircases and chandeliers and water and sky and clouds and all sorts of things. Anyway, so, this was an interesting one because the 
original photograph is, is this here, and it was actually a wake from a boat in Alaska. And one day I went a little berserk with the paint and just started throwing it and doing all sorts of things with it. And then I, I put these two chandeliers, which are from a, a um, let's see, a church in the south of France, where I was doing a residency at the time. And then I put a piece up here, I collaged it on, and, and I didn't like it. And it usually doesn't happen to me. I, I said, you know, this is not working. So I put it away. And then a couple of years later, I said, wait a minute, didn't I, let me find that. So I brought it out, I took off the, the collaged piece, and I said, okay, now what am I gonna do? There was a big blank space. I said, oh, chandeliers. I have a series of chandeliers. And so I looked in my, all my you know, archive, and I, this is the chandelier from the Central Cafe in Vienna. So I, this was so much fun to paint, I can't tell you. It was really, really, really fun. So I did that, and it's, it's totally weird, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then behind you on the other wall, there's a couple of other mixed media works on paper. Excuse me. And these again, this is one is called Parting of the Plates. And it's, it's on a, a wooden panel. And um, it was a photograph that I took in Maine, in Portland, Maine. Uh, we were zigzagging down a path and we came upon this beautiful big uh, Zen garden with a stone, these stones that were probably about, let's say, 12, 14 feet in diameter. I mean, they were really, really big. And they were sunk, sunk into the earth, and I thought, oh my God, that looks like a background of something. So I took it, I photographed it in such a way that I created an, a third circle. I'm interested in threes and fives and sevens, not twos and fours and sixes. I like uneven numbers because it, to me it creates a tension. And so then there are five, actually five photographs in this. They're the two original, pr all printed in black and white. Then I added paint and um, um, colored pencil and all sorts of stuff. Then there's, there's a, I transferred this image here from Napa Valley with this crow here. And there are two crows right here from Portland, Oregon. And then <laughs> this image of this branch is from, is the reflection in the water of a tree that was in another Zen garden in, in Oregon. And then these little circular things are the bubbles that were on the surface of the water. So I like that because it had all this textures, visual texture. And so I transferred this all on and then I went really crazy and, and just you know added all sorts of color and paint and all sorts of things. This, this one was really interesting. It took a long time because I kept looking at it to see what it needed. You know, you have to go slowly, but then of course you have to know when to stop. <laughs> That's one of the big things. <laughs> when to stop. This one was taken from a, a light plane flying from Orcas Island to Seattle, just a small plane. And I was just glued you know, to the window um, taking pictures of water. And so I saw this big, th big um, thing here. And I didn't know if it was an oil slick or whatever it was. I didn't really care. I really liked it. <laughs> so I first did this side. And I added other, collaged on other images of water with colored pencil. This actually is acrylic. And then I, I transferred this branch. This is a branch from an oak tree. And then about a year later, I thought, you know, it would be interesting if I flipped the image, if I flipped it, and then don't add any color at all. See what the contrast, see how that works. So that's how I composed that. Let's see, have we done just about everything? Yes, the fish. <laughs> the fish. Okay, these pieces here 
are what I've been working on since for about the last seven years. These again are my photographs. These are uh, koi from Maui. Those are jellyfish from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. They're straight photographs. Those are printed onto plexiglass. And um, as you can see, Mitch, could you just tap that lightly? Make it go around, tw oh. twirl it. Yeah, right. There. That's OK. But you see, sometimes if it's lit, it, you can see a, a colored shadow oh, yeah. on the wall. And the shadow on this is black and white, but it definitely comes through if it's lit. Thank you, Justin, <laughs> for lighting, lighting it so nicely. And so um, these are um, straight photographs. I didn't do anything <coughs> to these. I have other pieces that I've drawn and collaged onto and done all sorts of things that are kinetic. And so that's what I've been doing lately. This one is the most current. It's um, from 2022. So any questions? <laughs> when, when, when you go from like one phase into the next, uh -huh. um, is, it, is it just like something pulls you and you just go with it? Yeah, sometimes I get images in my dreams. Uh -huh. I get a lot of information. Sometimes just before I wake up, there's this burning image and I have to drag, you know, get a piece of uh, paper and draw it or write on, you know. Make, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of that phenomenon, so I'm waiting for it perhaps to happen. And um, that's how the cakes happen, <laughs> for instance. And Josephine. And Josephine, yes, Gordon. Do you have a transition or do you abruptly abandon what you're working on and jump to the next movie? Let's see. Do I have a transition? Well, I'll tell you that um, in this book, this piece here called Windbreak, was one I did in um, 15, 2015. And it's a, an image of a windbreak in the, on the North Island of New Zealand. It's a photograph I took and then I drew it on to the surface. And I looked at it and I said, wait a minute, didn't I do some, some kinetic work a while ago? Wait, this looks awfully familiar to me. It's circular, it's kinetic. And I thought, well, actually, I did this one called Hollywood Car Wash in 1973. So I was coming back to an idea that I had started decades before, but I wasn't conscious of it at the time. I just recognized, I said, God, that looks familiar. <laughs> and I realized that I'd done it in 70. What is it, 74, 1974. And this piece is about 12 feet high. And it's made out of, I had, hi Nina. <laughs> I had no money, I was a starving artist. So I went down to Costco and I got the cheapest Japanese ribbon I could find. It just rolls and rolls and rolls of it. And I made these sculptures. I made a whole series of these. And um, yes. Yes. What did you think about when you did art? When I what? When you did art. When you're doing art, what are you thinking? Oh, what am I do thinking? Oh, that's a good question. Um, what am I thinking? That's a really good question. Okay, I'm thinking about line. I'm thinking about color. I'm thinking about shapes. And I'm thinking about how things go together and how, how they might 
be like something I've done before, but just a little bit different. That's one way I do it. I start with one thing. Like, for instance, pass keys, that's one of five. I did a whole series of, of five sculptures that used those same colors, those same size hoops, but they were put in different arrangements. So I just keep going and going and going and try to change it just a little bit and do something else and then look at that and change it just a little bit and do something else. Good question. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I want to piggyback on that question. And um, so when you getting into your thought process, you just describe what you're doing, but do you have something like a, a larger image in mind, or is that revealing itself to you as you're working? Yeah, I, it, it does reveal itself. I take random photographs, and I say, I have no idea why I'm taking this photograph, but maybe I'll use it. I have something like 24,000 photographs in my, <laughs> and so, when I get stuck, I just start looking at my photographs, and then I say, it's got to be interesting to me for, at that point in that time, and then I'll go with it, and I think, what can I do with that? What can I, can I put it with something else or something? But um, I'm always taking photographs. Uh, most of the photographs I take are of nature. Mostly. So is that how that painting evolved? I mean, it was a photograph? Yeah. Uh, when I saw these big stones sunk in the ground, I, I knew that I could use that as a background and build images on top of it. So I, I took it immediately. <laughs> Yes. Could you say something about your longevity as an artist? Because what's really impressed <laughs> me for as long as I've known you is how you've never stopped. How you That's keep true. going. Yeah. And you I mean, this is an incredible array of different expressions of you. Yeah. Can you say something to that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what can I say? Well, I always have made things with my hands my whole life, since I was a little tiny kid. And I always had a camera around from the time I was like five or six or seven or something like that. So I had that, my father was a, a, a ph photographer and had an um, amateur photographer, but he was a very good, he had a good eye and he had a dark room. So I was always interested in how that happened. And so I kept going through life and I didn't know that I was an artist. I didn't know that I could be an artist, that there was something to be called an artist, you know? I just made these things. And so luckily I had a, a, an instructor who said, you should go to the Rhode Island School of Design. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> and so I did. And I majored in sculpture. And then I got, went to Manhattan and I got all involved with the whole underground video um, uh, thing uh, you know for three and a half years I was I was shooting it was it was images it was just moving images so it was it was you know I was just shooting a camera the whole time then I escaped and I came to Cal California in 1973 and I said oh didn't I go to art school <laughs> <laughs> and what did I major in oh that's right sculpture oh okay <laughs> I'll do sculpture and then <laughs> I made I made Hollywood car wash, and 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 that was you know this this is my one of my very first pieces I made, and I thought okay we're on a roll here, so I made a whole bunch in this series different lines of them and all sorts of stuff, and so I just kept going and I had every dumb job you can imagine to keep it together. I did teach children for years and years um, art, but I kept continuing to do my work. I refused to stop doing my work. Whatever I had to do, I did it. So I've basically been going from the last 50 years, from 1973 to 19, 2023, and I'm still doing my work. <laughs> Thank you.